Um, I feel ready to see what chapter two is about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited because I just like replayed this chapter. I was just finishing up the light world this morning. Oh, that was a different. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, oh, okay. So a different, a different um, file safe picker. Yeah, I was trying to puzzle through like how this works the last time, or like like a day or two ago, and I, I think it really is just like there are a lot of different branches that you could create. Um, which is kind of thematically interesting. Anyway, um, just like the sheer entropy of it is like really interesting. But yeah, so like this is just continuing on from that. So you can have two more save slots for that initial branch. Yeah. Um, which is just wild. Um, and that's, that's interesting. I'll need to I'll need to remember too. But there there will be a point where I'll tell you to uh, probably duplicate your save. Um, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you do something after you complete the chapter. Um, but yeah, we can talk about that later. Okay. I'll have to try to remember. It probably won't be today, but yeah, I'd be curious to come back to the screen and, and mess with things. Mm -hmm. Like I want to go back and see if I can see the old menu, but also. Oh yeah, I think at this. Oh well. Um, yeah, I mean you can you can start a new chapter one. Uh, save. Like you can replay chapter one again if you want. Um, but the, uh, that, like, green text over the black, um, the Gaster UI, um, I don't think you can get that anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think once you finish chapter one the first time, it, it changes to a more normal UI like this. It still has, like, the, you know, the UI voice that talks to you, like, like talks you through deleting and stuff, but it's a different, it's got a different vibe to it. It's, it's interesting. Hmm. Cool, I'm gonna see... Where this leads us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you remember that that end sequence? Oh, right. Yeah. I might cut this, but that one Vine video. What do you have? <laughs> A knife. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should leave that in. That's okay. pretty good. That's that's Chris. What do you have? That's like in 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 uh, the spirit of the scene. Uh, you should you should actually you should cut in that Vine. Just punch it in everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have to go find it. <laughs> Lock, Lock the, the oven. oven. <laughs> Chris is such a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, okay. Okay, that's that's inventory. Okay. Uh uh, no, okay. Since chapter one. Yeah, that's a detail that I've been thinking about a little bit. Um no we don't know what it means yet. Um but Yeah, that's curious. I guess you could have different Chris's from starting from different chapters. Yeah, I, I need to look and see if that's if that's the case. If you like skip chapter one, because you, you can skip chapter one and just start a chapter two save. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's episodic in that way. But I don't know if it actually, I think it does. I think it changes it to Chris since chapter two. But it's also interesting because it's like, does that mean we're going to play a different character at some point? Or we're going to be somebody else since chapter three? Or something like that. I don't know. There are a lot of ways it could go. But 
<laughs> All right, off to a good start. <laughs> At least the landline works. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh. I mean, <laughs> I'll put it back if I still have it at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so that's that's an Undertale reference. Hmm. Gel pen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's some like powerful like uh aughts vibes. I mean, cause Toby Fox is like 30. So if he's making something that's like nostalgic to his childhood. Okay. Okay. I think I'm good. There's the cactus again. <laughs> Definitely not a tsundere cactus. Just generally, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I remember all my controls. Hmm. Uh, ZXC. ZXC. Yep. There's the pet shampoo. <laughs> okay, well, nothing seems to be out of place. Yeah. All seems pretty normal. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, everything oh. seems to be here. <laughs> I just wanted to see what would happen. Yeah, no, that's fair. So, I don't know if you noticed uh, the first time around, the TV was not plugged in yesterday. Oh. Yeah. There's that hymnal. Mm -hmm. Stolen hymnal. Yeah, if I can. What is Toriel doing? I, I, no one knows. Maybe Chris stole it for her as like a present. I could see that. Yeah. It's like sweet and kind of a gremlin way. Late again. Man, even Susie was there earlier. Wait, was the last time we saw the Seisha they were like huddled in an alleyway? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alfie's in her, her dirty alley. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, she's a, she's a dirtbag. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could walk back into a classroom after having seen that. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, it's okay that you skipped class all day. I'm the cool teacher. <laughs> like, she's great. She's such a, like, pathetic woman. We must protect pathetic women. <laughs> oh, that's a... You don't tell Susie that. <laughs> She's gonna bite, bite out of it. <laughs> yeah. Such a hero. I feel like that's the first page, but okay. Maybe he's just making it up. <laughs> Is 
see. She's the cool teacher. The cool teacher. I'm not mad. I'm just worried. <laughs> Scarlet is really working on her rawhide there. Yeah, she's going to town. At least she's not dropping it. <laughs> um yeah how much of a smart ass like shit lord are you gonna be i mean I was trying to think of like what's the actual answer here because I don't know how well Chris slept to begin with. True. Maybe waking up in the middle of the night and taking a knife to your chest is a good night. Yeah. T yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They seem like a troubled kid. Oh, uh, they yeah, yeah. They're a gremlin. Yeah. They're maybe gremlin is an understatement. eyes look a little bloodshot <laughs> I think she's just always like that I mean she may or may not be uh, un unhoused <laughs> Just try more doors. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, the Osamatsu pose. It's an anime, well, manga reference. Manga and anime, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Now, now, now she's smooth. Mm. Forever. Because we uh, we talked to Noel in the town yesterday. Uh, yeah.
So not not a Tuvix situation. No. <laughs> no. Absolutely like, double confirmed it. Yeah, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, also, um, if you go into the menu, there's an auto run uh, feature. If you if you want to turn that on, you don't have to. But oh yeah, look at that. No, I'm good. Okay. I'll uh I'll torture her. It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> our boy. That's right. I need to go find all of the pictures I've ever seen of Ralsei with a gun. Of gun Ralsei, yeah. Just, just absolutely reckless in every <laughs> single one of them. Yeah. Who gave the femboy a gun? <laughs> it's irresponsible. Yeah, he's so pathetic. We need to protect pathetic femboys mm -hmm. and pathetic women. So this was the horrible place we came from yeah. the first time around. Yeah, the cliffs. The deeper levels of hell. <laughs> yeah, the six question marks area. Yeah. Well, now I want to see it's over here first. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the perpetually locked classroom that drives me insane. That suspiciously is maybe kind of in the place where that cliffs area is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about that lately. I mean, because huh. we, we didn't get in there until we were in the closet, so maybe the closet's part, like, Castletown and the cliffs are in the closet, but who knows. The clock is at six in this room. It's the only it's the only clock in town, as far as I know, that's at six. And I also That also keeps me up at night. Um, Yeah, do the clocks have minute hands? Uh, yeah, the other ones do. So it's it's at six thirty technically, or it just doesn't have a minute hand. Yeah. Or or it, I think it's maybe just the minute hand, like the minute and the hour hand are overlapping. So I think the hour hand is maybe red or something. Huh. Yeah, because six thirty wouldn't be both pointing straight down. Oh yeah, I guess it wouldn't be. Because the hour hand would be scooched over a bit. Yeah. So it's it's just six. Yeah. And no minute. Ah, that's weird. Yeah, just just both hands are at six. Yeah, it's it's weird. <laughs> We've talked about it. I think that six is a is a number. Uh, try going down the hallway. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> just keep trying. <laughs> wow total wingman here <laughs> she's the cool teacher <laughs> Try calling your mom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, cool guy narrator sometimes. Cause you, beat, you beat some people up last time, huh? Rossi, Rossi's probably into it. Yeah. Getting conquered. Yeah, he's all about he's all about uh, getting conquered. him affectionate. Oh wow. Yeah, he was his, his tyrant boss. Yeah, no, he's all about uh, sucking up to the tyrant boss. Oh yeah, it's called um, Robert Town, huh. which is your name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm down for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Susie's compliment <laughs> to him was like, you're unbanned from ham, sa ham sandwich day. <laughs> Forget about the battle dojo when I'm playing. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's life savings. <laughs> it's probably like $2 too. <laughs> seen him clean shaven. Yeah, that's a look. Yeah. The first time I ever saw that character, I thought that his beard was his mouth. Um, 
<laughs> it was not a super pleasant, like, mind image. Um, Interesting. When I was replaying this, like in the past couple days, I tried to do kind of a bad boy route, at least in like the first chapter. Um, where I just like kind of fought through everything, and I realized like it's faster a lot of the time to just like pacify and spare things. I think in this chapter it kind of changes a little bit, which it'll there'll be a little hint about that later. But um, but yeah, it's just interesting how they they the game seems to really push you towards sparing, even though there isn't like a clear consequence for not doing so. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently that guy was like a scrapped character or something. He's also like a diamond and a jewel. I don't know. It's little details like that kind of get to me. Hmm. Mamma mia! Smith. <laughs> yeah, you probably have both ribbons. I forgot to do this at the start of my last, uh, I don't remember where the, where the pink ribbon was. I guess you probably didn't grab the... Huh. Never grabbed the pink ribbon. Yeah. It's not that important. So all of the chapter one enemies were auto recruited. I'm kind of realizing in hindsight, chapter one's a little bit of a tutorial. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that was like fully intentional or if it's just like things changed so much in development after that first like demo chapter was released. But yeah, this, this chapter introduces like a fair number of new mechanics. Oh yeah, you have to like, uh, 
You can only use the left and right arrow keys, but you can you can get all four of those chairs. It's not the most like intuitive. Um... Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, depending on who's in which position, they'll sometimes they'll give you like little extra dialogue. Undertale reference. <laughs> A lot of those. Actually fewer in this chapter. But... Huh. Now there's a, a space requirement on items. Oh yeah, you all there. There was always limited space. Oh, it, that's just saying how much. Uh... Yeah, I noticed a couple of things have changed. Like, mm -hmm. there's some different animations in the combat screen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, space, mercy percentage. Yeah, so the space was always there. It's just telling you now how much space you have. Okay. Um, I think it's also factoring in storage space because there's storage now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, items and armor have different storage, or have different um, space allotments. Sorry, lit. I'm but just a block. Friendship by the power of Grayskull. Oh, okay. 
okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then the clock is running too while you're here. Mm. That's different. Yeah, I think it's always I think it's always running. But I'm pretty sure it was static in the last chapter. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's always running. Otherwise, yeah. it just but yeah, in this show it. in this menu, yeah. That is kind of interesting. Hmm. Yeah, you can save it in whichever one. Yeah. But like. Wasn't I already in slot one? Yeah, this is one of the, <laughs> some of the things that's been driving me mad. More from a programming standpoint than from a <laughs> like a lore standpoint, but yeah, yeah. I mean, a little bit from a lore standpoint, but See, yeah. So that that first slot, yeah, you have three files within that first slot. Oh no. Yeah, isn't that insane? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, there's so much entropy that could be. So just to be safe, I'm gonna save on the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, why not? Because that that I'm, feels super sketchy to me. I'm gonna later make you use another slot, but there it is. <laughs> wow, yeah, I don't even know what I was doing here. Oh, that's a new line. Its value increases each chapter. Oh yeah, yeah, that is a new line. Um, so I would, I would recommend maybe the glow shard if you wanna if you wanna hoard the glow shard. Oh, it's just it's just putting on the same spot over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they'll they'll stay in your inventory every time that you come back back in. But oh, what? What is even the sort order here? Okay. <laughs> oh, is it left right? Yeah, it's it's left right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Won't worry about that particular instance of Choice. UX. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Toby Fox is a composer before he's a yeah. programmer. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know the hat rack could talk. Oh yeah, it's the um the jack. The jack and the ball. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. What is this cauldron? <laughs> it's where he cooks. <laughs> this little gay boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are some good recipes for essentially cauldron that's, soups. That's true. You do a lot of cauldron cooking. Yeah. If our Dutch oven is a cauldron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do primarily cook in a cauldron. Yeah. Well, and the the uh, cast iron pans are kind of like little mini cauldrons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the explosion gets me every time. <laughs> I, I won't argue with that. Get up and down and something. <laughs> also, like, they didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> they, they just... <laughs> yeah, they just got left here. Yeah. You've got that on your own. hamster cage? <laughs> it's a hamper. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gonna try to salvage this one? Mm -hmm. What are you gonna say?
Oh, that's true. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think it's mentioned at one point that, like, King was less bad before the uh, fountain opened. Though maybe still a little bad. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not the father of the year. Israel's trophies are on Chris's side. Hmm. Also, the stars from Azrael's side of the room. Uh, oh, you got a moss patch. You can oh. you can investigate the moss patch. I was gonna say, is it gonna be edible? <laughs> It does look delicious. <laughs> it's very thoughtful. It is very thoughtful. Oh man. All the furniture has horns. <laughs> that's that's kind of an interesting detail actually, the horns and the crowns. That's fun, letting Susie be the main character for a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. <laughs> the axe is over the the <laughs> headboard too. Yeah, it's badass. Uh, carpet has moons. Oh, it's her um when she uh, attacks with her axe. Ah. Yeah, but Chris gets the Delta rune with the colors. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it's the only one in the games actually that has the colors represented. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think it's the same room, except that his bike isn't in bed. <laughs> so the bed was for the bike? The bed was for the bike. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, alright everyone, we're mm. out of bed here, <laughs> Jesus. Get me out! <laughs> Oh, and the splat noise plays backwards. Uh, 
Why it wasn't my choice? <laughs> Everything is your choice. You're the you're the protagonist. What happened? We just opened that door. Yeah, the uh, the locked uh, like throne room or something with six wings. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> direction was off this way. Hmm. Oh, hey. Oh, it's, uh, Mr. Elegance. I think that's his name. <laughs> wow, that's Oh, right, because those are his nostrils and not his eyes. Yeah, as you do. It's the way of the worm. Oh, what is going on here? <laughs> Dude. Dude. <laughs> Pervert. Wow. It's fucked up. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, there is, um, I think back to the right where the cliff was, or not, not the right, sorry, the left, um, where the cliff, cliff was. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Mr. Society is hanging out over there. Yeah. I'm very curious about Mr. Society. everything in, in Castletown. Huh, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess. Close the fountain. Mm -hmm. The king is a hamster. Yeah. I I don't know what else uh, what else we need here. Yeah. I think I feel like King was always a hamster. <laughs> he was just wasn't in his in his natural element. King hamper. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> He's such a peach boy. <laughs> Toothpaste boy. <laughs> kind boy. <laughs> huh. Had room for him. Yeah. <laughs> well, the key items would have, would have had room, but yeah, yeah. Though I mean, I feel like that should be something Mr. Toby Fox works with at some point. There, there's always something nice when a game says, "Actually, you know what? Something critical couldn't happen." Yeah. Because of the choices that you made. That is probably a thing that yeah. There probably will be stuff like that down the line. <laughs> Sophie, <laughs> wow. There's a woman, the woman on a mission. Where's my little bed? Um. Do you want me to go grab it? Sure. I think it's over on the dining table, maybe? Yeah, probably. Yeah, 
the Queen Sovereign herself has decided to join us. Oh, attack at the Killer Queen. That'll make more sense. It's not to her liking. <laughs> it's a bed on the desk right next to me in the warmest room in the house. Hmm. But somehow it's incorrect. She's very particular in her needs. I think the need now is probably the fish stick. Oh, true. The fish wrap that Scarlet has. Well, she's almost finished it, so. <laughs> I can just feel Sophie trying to use her fabulous mind powers to <laughs> summon the fish wrap. I say fabulous mind powers, it's just daggers. She's staring daggers at the dog. <laughs> <laughs> get, get her out of here. She, the dog is like rules card. Nobody wants her. Wants her to be here. Oh, okay. Bye. Oh, gotta sniff, sniff my toe. Okay. Alright. Oh, okay, she's going in her box. Again, I'm just like enjoying this moment where both animals are in their beds. Almost within slapping distance of each other. And instead they're just calm out and then Scarlet's up and patrolling. Maybe if we just ignore her yeah. long enough. It's it's the most stubborn look she gives you. <laughs> yeah, I sort of lay down and she's just blank stare ahead. <laughs> she's suddenly deaf and dumb and doesn't know anything. <laughs> Rolls right, so card. Rolls card joined the party. Oh, and then because we got Starwalker. <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah. See, this is why I make you do this dumb shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the original Starwalker. Yeah, he's the original. That bird was pissing him off. Well, this should be interesting. Just ran off. <laughs> okay, hang on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, look at this. This whole place is just unlocked. Yep. Yeah, you could just steal anything you wanted out of the school. Except most of the children's books are yours. <laughs> this narrator loves the Throne of the Gods joke. Cannot get enough of it. <laughs> Gotta take a hit of that, that marker. <laughs> Go huff it. Yes, there is an hour hand. Yeah, and that one says almost ten or ten PM. Yeah, it's um it's like mirrored from the other one. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably because the sprite sheet was mirrored and like maybe Toby uh, Fox just thought it was interesting, so he like left it in. So it wouldn't be hard to patch that out, but Yeah, this is not ten PM unless no. or like midsummer very far north. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, let's talk to the you talk to the guys in the car if you want to.
<laughs> um, so down, yeah. Wow. Okay. There's a there's a man. In, so that that doesn't happen unless uh, unless you saw the tree room in chapter one. Oh. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting little tidbit. Oh, good girl. The the honks are playing a Undertale motifs. <laughs> it's cute. Um, <laughs> yep. <All> right. <laughs> that's that's a fun way to do that. Cool observation. Oh yeah, the yeah. I block off the other roads. Yeah. It can't all be police tape. <laughs> yeah, there's no one here. <laughs> you try it. Mm, call of the void. Yeah. Except not. <laughs> Except I was, she was... <laughs> I was there yesterday. Yeah. You were absolutely terrified. You couldn't move a single inch forward unless I walked in with you. <laughs> well, but now that now that she's done it, mm -hmm. she's like all gung ho about it. It's their it's their thing that they do together. It's the reason they're friends. Mm -hmm. You know, if they didn't have the dark worlds, would would they even be friends? That's a good question. <laughs> Still not two vix. Nope. <laughs> one of these times, one of these times, it is going to be a two vix situation, <laughs> and I'm going to be so happy. Oh, that's that's interesting. <laughs> That would be a, a weird turn for the story, maybe, but... Just because the very first time I was like, you know, that's the blend of their colors. <laughs> and it's only one character. Yeah. That's... You know? Who knows? Okay. New... New lobby to hell. <laughs> uh, no access to recruits. Do have access to storage. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Ominous wire. Why is it cracked here? No, oh, is it cracked or is it glitched? Mm, that looks like a crack to me. Yeah. Like a PC board, PCB board. It's been cracked. Oh, uh, fair. Yeah, that. Yep. <laughs> there sure are. Oh yeah, I guess it is cracked. Oh cool. <laughs> what are these? Nothing. Oh okay. <laughs> uh okay. They are. Not synchronized, that's fair. Yeah, just like cracked everywhere. Mm. Hey, you again. Everyone was dot dot dot. Hit it in everything.
<laughs> what? <laughs> that's um, that's almost certainly Toby Fox doing that voice too, which is really funny to me. <laughs> I think that's MD5 or something. Yeah, maybe. It's... Oh, actually, I think somebody did, like, decrypt it at one point, and it... Uh, if you just keep... yeah. It's, uh, it's not hexadecimal. I think decrypted it just says queen. <laughs> um, I think somebody did actually try that at one point. I mean, I can see Queen embedded in there. Yeah, maybe that's yeah, maybe that's just what it is, and it's just like kind of arbitrary. I don't know, it could be. Could but then, be what is five four x seven y y two nine four? Who who knows? Maybe maybe there's some deep lore. <laughs> x y y. It's also not hexadecimal. Yeah, I think it might just be random. Might be. He might have just key smashed, but who knows? Who knows? It could be. It could be a key for something. So you're, you're getting the, the lore brain. <laughs> That's smart, you always gotta be on guard. Not false statements. Yeah. <laughs> She'll just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Just gotta get it all out. Mm. Some villain's gonna monologue and then run away. Mm. <laughs> 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 ah, the wires. <laughs> uh, we're Become down one. Part of the Borg. I was worried Susie wouldn't be able to spare. Mm. <laughs> so that's no, she's normally in here. Your... She's a team player now. Yeah. It's almost like she's a hero now. Susie you tank things so I can just heal her up at the end. Yeah. <laughs> there 
hilarious. <laughs> Put them into sleep mode. The peach boy. amount of time in. Mm. Um, I'll probably finish Brewski Tooski. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we should open the weird beer. Oh yeah. And then uh, maybe a little bit of talk about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was it was an intro. It was a good it's intro. The, yeah. I, I I definitely I'll I'll save it for after. But mm -hmm. yeah, I like I like where it was going. Mm-hmm. It's that or risk hitting the marker button again mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure that's how i i lost our audio that one time <laughs> <laughs> exciting channel announcement um some of that art that i submitted to that that like daltarine youtuber um for his, for his stream um he decided that he was going to use some of it for a, an upcoming video <laughs> oh that's fun along with along with some other other people's um he was just like i guess he was just like oh yeah i got this art i'm doing a a video about music about this character so i'll work in some of this like surreal bizarre like rapper gaster <laughs> fan art so <laughs> so that's fun cool um yeah what are your thoughts uh i i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i thought i had thoughts but i i think what i was saying before that like it's an intro mm -hmm. a reintroduction and that's kind of nice to like settle back into it. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of interesting like, I guess like improvements or details now, mm -hmm. which I think is interesting because it's like, it's like it's like clearly that chapter one and chapter two were developed separately, mm -hmm. um, even though they were released together. As I oh, understand it, uh, no. So chapter one was released in like 2018. Uh, okay. Um, and I so the way it was released. Um, it was kind of uh, framed as like it was. It was framed in a kind of diegetic way. Uh, we talked about like the the weird spooky Ubo face guy, like took over the Twitter and like released it. Um, it was it was framed kind of diegetically as like a survey or an experiment. Um, and I I think the idea was always that it would be both a demo, but like like a demo in like a a try out the game sense but also a, a demo in the like uh let's get feedback on this on this software product sense um i i really do think it was like kind of to get just people playing it and see what improvements need to be made um 
and just see how it was received. And so I think I think chapter two is kind of building on that a little bit because chapter two came out in twenty twenty maybe twenty twenty one, um, and I I I don't think chapter two was ever really supposed to come out early, but but Toby Toby Fox kind of did it as a um a, a like pandemic shit, release. Yeah, he was like shit sucks. I'm just gonna release this for free because like people need stuff to enjoy and also also maybe to get you know just more feedback and yeah. just kind of build can you know continue building hype for it because it, it had been several years at that point since the first demo came out the the only other only other game that i know that that did a pandemic release was um uh banner lord which is like the second or third or fourth game in the mount and blade series mm-hmm. however you count you know games versus dlc versus expansions or whatever mm-hmm. um a, a different situation uh, uh there's a bigger team behind that game from when it first came out years and years ago and i don't know to their credit they they weathered a lot of like negative publicity mm-hmm. because they said hey we're going to release this a year early mm-hmm. it's not complete uh but also it's the pandemic everything fucking sucks mm-hmm. so here's the game that everyone's been waiting for and then but please bear in mind that we're still working on it so mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's, it's not the first time i've heard of that happening um it's definitely i, I feel like we're not truly post pandemic yet mm-hmm. but we're kind of in that i think a lot of people are in the headspace if not mm-hmm. if not the reality yet mm-hmm. um cuz yeah things were strange yeah. <laughs> during the pandemic yeah and I, I think this game was always supposed to be chapter based, but I don't think it was supposed to be necessarily episodic. Um, so like the the thing that we're waiting for now is chapters three through five, which will be like a real like paid uh, release. Mm. Um, and then there should be like two more chapters after that, maybe. Who knows? Um, but yeah, ch- chapter two releasing early like that was maybe kind of a, a fluke. That was just, you know, a, a thing that Toby Fox decided to do. Um Toby Fox and the the team because he's got a team working on it now, um, but yeah, ch- chapter one was always kind of a uh, like a demo in more more ways than one. Um, and yeah, when, when I was saying like before before we started playing this, like I think chapter two is just kind of better like overall. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's got it's got a little more meat to it. Um, it's also apparently one of the longer chapters that's uh, being planned or has been developed. So yeah. Yeah, because what I'll say is I I was noticing a lot of like small details Mm -hmm. because I think, yeah, we have the benefit of like playing one chapter right after the other. Mm -hmm. And yeah, things like the save menu where the clock is ticking, Mm -hmm. Um, which it always is. But now they they've shown they're showing it Mm -hmm. in the save menu. The clock is ticking. And yeah, not not to get too lore brain about it, but I think that's that's an interesting detail to have and mm-hmm. I, i'd be curious if if they were planning anything around that like you know what now, now that you mention it actually less of a lore thing and more of a um just a meta thing i wonder if it's for speedrunners. true um because because there, there have been other things that have been implemented in these games that are kind of there for speedrunners sakes um but yeah because toby fox uh like i think is a fan of speed runs um stuff like that so th- that's the kind of stuff that he, he thinks about um yeah it, it'd be interesting to see if that was used in a lore way i think that would be a little hard both from a maybe not so much from a development standpoint but just from a player standpoint as far as like how to juice that because most of the player base is not speedrunners. yeah but, well and, and that's an odd place to have the clock running yeah on the same menu like normally that. yeah normally a speed running you would have your own like tools that would yeah. be that time, yeah. And and you wouldn't count pause menu time in a mm-hmm. lot of cases. Mm-hmm. Um, m- maybe you would in like certain categories, but I think yeah. definitely some categories you just you wouldn't. Yeah, you just wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, in the same way that you wouldn't count loading times or transition mm-hmm. times or cutscenes, like yeah, anything that's not truly diegetic to the game. Yeah, you don't count as part of your speed run, so I don't know. It, it does. It stands out to me, I guess. Yeah, that is an interesting detail. Yeah. 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 And if 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 he's of the same generation of gamers that we are, there are definitely time based games or 
games that time out depending on how long you take yeah i'd be curious to see if there's a flag somewhere in the uh (laughs) Oh god! The, the, uh, the did you did you take a look at the save files at one point? I've I've been through the save files. Yeah, I, I think I recorded a couple of clips of me editing them. Yeah, and they're just insane. They're just row after row after row of yeah. maybe binary. Maybe oh, it's um no, it's um. I guess it's not key value pairs, but it, it like each line corresponds to a a value that affects something in the game. It's just it's just you know UTF like whatever. It's not encoded yeah or like encrypted necessarily it's just uh like you can see all of chris's stats and stuff in there i guess technically each each uh value is in like maybe a different format there's some like for the thrash machine there's like a hue saturation value value but it's like coerced in strange ways into what actually is usable by the program which is it's uh yeah it's just a anyway there are a bunch of uh, spaces for flags that like some of them nobody just just nobody knows what they do <laughs> which is fine i wonder if there if there is a flag that'll be set by time like that that'd be interesting because what what's the framework that he's using a uh, game maker studio i'd be curious to know more about game maker because those save files in that serialization is so 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 like unfriendly yeah uh you know there there are games like like the paradox games so hearts of iron stellaris victoria the other games that they do i'm sure i'm forgetting a bunch but their save files i i want to say a lot of them are are json mm-hmm. uh, key value pairs it says exactly what it is and it prints everything that a save is. But, you know, they, they wrote their own engine, and I think their their intent is, like, twofold. One, it's it's easier debugging on their end. Mm-hmm. And two, they, they do try to enable, like, people to edit their save files if they want to. Mm-hmm. Um, this, like, coming straight out of a framework that just dumps numbers on special lines... Super unfriendly, but also kind of an, an interesting take where if you want to modify that save file, you have to like basically like decompile the situation and like figure it out that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess because like we have spreadsheets and stuff now that people have made that will tell you like which line changes what. I'm also wondering if maybe they did that, like made it so obtuse on purpose. Uh, yeah. Uh, because there is a. Uh, a history of i mean because uh basically toby fox knows at this point that people are going to rip this game to to shreds like in a data mining sense um and is maybe kind of trying to make that uh put just a little bit of a barrier um so that it takes a little more time when each chapter releases to or each batch of chapters releases to like so people have time to like experience the game before the data miners go through and like tear everything apart yeah um there's also a lot of lore stuff in this game that is only accessible through data mining so like we're kind of supposed to do that to a certain degree but yeah i don't i i think there, there could be a, la- a layer of like this is intentionally hostile but that also could just be a side effect of how game maker studio does it because I, I think the undertale file might maybe is like a similar situation like just like here are a bunch of values there's a value per line. Um, yeah, because that, that that is one thing I know about Undertale is that there are there's documentation out there around resetting your save file essentially so that you can run peaceful after a genocide run. Yeah, without being uh, without having to deal with the consequences of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, without having to engage with the um, <laughs> the storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there, is, uh, there is a reason there's a good reason why you can't do that yeah. <laughs> without without fucking up your save file so it makes a lot of sense to me that even though it's yeah it just it's just this insane long list of just like values on lines with no sense of what they are mm-hmm. it makes perfect sense that you would leave it that way yeah you wouldn't do any work to make it more readable more human friendly and yeah for the other devs on the team like there's 
documentation and stuff so like yeah i, I would i would hope and i would imagine maybe that there's a, a non like crushed version of the save file yeah maybe there is that yeah. just literally says oh music volume Mm -hmm. uh how many chapters completed you know blah 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 yeah chris hp yeah um, yeah stuff like that uh flag for this thing flag for that thing i also yeah. think they're probably just a bunch of en empty spaces for potential flags um, but also also knowing what like game development frameworks look like i bet it also doesn't exist it also yeah might just kind of be a trash fire because that's what yeah game maker studio does yeah um, there's a at some point I can I should show you the the crazy fucking thing. There's like a very weird coercion of values that nobody can figure out if it's like lore significant or not. That happens in the the vessel making sequence. I should show you that at some point. Basically, a value that should be the the value that's in the zero position that should be saved like like flagged in the save file as a zero gets coerced into a one i think or like a negative one or something and the second value in the list gets coerced into a zero hmm. which is really weird and it's the only place in that entire sequence where that happens anyway it's a, it's a whole thing but right because like when you're picking your hair your body mm -hmm. your hoodie and everything yeah the the trait that you can give it i think the first one on the list is like kindness and the second one is mind hmm. and so for some reason there is like code specifically in place that coerces um, for, for every other choice that you make there. Like, you know, the first thing in the list is say is flagged as zero, as, as you would expect. Um, and in this one, for some reason, if you choose kindness, it flags it as a, either a one or a negative one. And it, if you choose mind, which is the second in the list, it flags it as zero, hmm. which is real weird. Anyway, um, yeah, nobody can figure out we just probably don't have enough data yet. Basically, uh, if you start a chapter two file without any chapter one save data, because that's the thing you can do. We were talking about that earlier. Um, basically, the, the file will be almost entirely blank, except it makes a thrash machine. And for some reason, it like actually chooses things for that. Um, because the thrash machine is another situation where you could just have the defaults be zero and it would be fine. There is a zero in the list of each of those, those options. Um, but it, uh, for some reason it, it optimizes for the guns trait, the G U N apostrophe S trait, um, which is, which is interesting. And it gives them, a uh, uh, Susie, Chris Rossi colors in that order for the head, body and feet. That's the one thing that it changes. And then in the for the vessel that it gives you, it's like all default values, or it's all zeros, which you would think is all default values, except for that trait hmm. that it's given. Because because there is a zero there, that means that mind was chosen and not kindness, which is a really weird thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Be curious where that goes. Yeah, because it's yeah. like... There's, uh, we've definitely talked about Mass Effect before, where there's like a canon storyline. So if you pick up the game in the later chapters, there's some canon choices that have already been made for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's interesting to note that there's some of that happening yeah, in, that's in the a, save file. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. It's like if, if the player hadn't intervened in chapter one, these would be the canon choices. Yeah. And the player intervening is inherently deviating from canon yeah in the in the context of this game oh that's a good way of putting it i'm going to think about that um because yeah this is what would ha would have happened i guess if the player hadn't intervened yeah i didn't write any notes down this time hmm. yeah there's just an intro i think the, the last couple of things i wanted to talk about was just the detail of definitely more more development time has been put into chapter two mm -hmm. uh it talked about the clock is ticking in the save uh the save menu whatever that means mm -hmm. i th i want to say and i'll have to go back and look at the the video that we captured but i want to say that 
Ralsei's one of his poses is different. Mm-hmm. I think it's the ready position for magic. Hmm. Now has a different pose. Oh, and different yeah. animation or something to it. Hmm. Um, that seemed different to me. Um, yeah, and some of the other little things, um, you know, inventory items now list their space. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mercy has a a listed percentage. Mm-hmm. Interesting choice. I, it wasn't necessary before, but it's it's a nice like quality of life. Yeah. Feature as I was playing through chapter two again, I was like, oh, I appreciate having this just visible. Um, I don't know if I ever really noticed it in chapter one, but in chapter two, I found myself noticing it. I was like, I want to know what my mercy percent is at. Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of little quality of life things just kind of like improved in this game in in this chapter. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, we got to get through chapter two and then we have to wait for the other chapters, but I like the Mm -hmm. trajectory things are on. Mm -hmm. Like chapter one makes sense as it is. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, I still, yeah, even though there's like quality of life improvements and other things have changed, there's still something nice about the way that chapter one does what it does in kind of a simple way. Mm-hmm. So that by the time you get to chapter two and whatever the next chapters will be, the the polish and the, the extra layers of complexity, either mechanically or story-wise yeah or even visually or even visually yeah feel feel like they make sense it feels Mm -hmm. like the the story is unfolding in front of you which is a a really cool way to like you know approach something like this yeah especially like there's been a lot of talk about i mean just in terms of like what are some of the themes that are being explored i think we talked about it a little before but like the idea of like this is a story about storytelling um and like the dark worlds are kind of a a diegetic vehicle for exploring like collaborative storytelling um like how people form relationships around stories um how forming relationships about stories like around stories like impacts those relationships and things like that um yeah seeing like the story unfold and like even improve in a lot of ways like over time is is an interesting way of like Maybe maybe kind of a side effect of the development process, but but a side effect that is effective. And there are also like there are mechanics that are introduced in this chapter that are not really like explained or like don't have like a huge impact or like significance or presence in this chapter, but that moving forward will, will almost certainly have a lot more of a we didn't really spend a whole lot of time in the the recruits menu. Uh did you notice the elements? No, I saw their likes and dislikes. <laughs> oh yeah, those are funny too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There. Uh. Each recruit has an element. Mm-hmm. Um. Some of them are like you know mono elements. It's kind of like Pokemon a little bit. They can have one element, or they can have a pair, or they they can have two. Um. And that's that's been a a thing that that folks have been thinking about because it's it's not really. It comes up in this chapter, but not in like a major way. Um. But yeah, like there's still mechanics that are they're being fleshed out as the story goes on. Um, and yeah, we haven't quite gotten to it yet. But like the I mean, it was mentioned the recruiting mechanic um, in chapter one. It doesn't matter if you, you know, fight uh, and like let the enemies run away, like end battles by fighting or uh, if you end battles with pacifying or, or mercy because um, they all just end up being recruited in chapter two. But like moving forward, that does start to matter. So yeah, it's just like kind of slowly introducing these things. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's inter- this is the chapter I think where choices start to uh, start to maybe matter a little more. Um, how much they matter? That's that's kind of to be seen. But um, yeah. There, there are some bigger ways and there are some smaller ways that that's, I keep, I keep uh, mysteriously alluding to a thing that I'm gonna have you do after the chapter is finished. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'm excited to get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> excited is is a is a word. Um. The other thing I was thinking about, um, I feel like chapter one is like pretty heavy on like lore, uh, exposition. 
or just like there's a lot of like weird mysterious loose ends that are like introduced and this chapter is i feel like a a little less it's a little more lighthearted. i feel like as far as a lot of that stuff goes but yeah it'll be interesting to go through it i think it's a funnier chapter but do you want to talk about the beer oh yeah we're drinking Little Beast Brewing's Flashbang, mm -hmm. which has been in the fridge for a minute because we've been do meaning to do chapter two for a minute, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've refused to open this and drink it until we actually sat down and recorded another episode because mm -hmm. it's called Flashbang uh, and it's sour beer with pomegranate. It's got little, um, it's got little grenades shaped like pomegranates on the can. Oh yeah. Which is cute. Honestly, it's a really drinkable beer. Yeah, it's it's nice. I when I when I got it, I thought it would be so over the top that it would be a beer that you'd be like, "Oh, I can have a couple of sips and now I'm way overwhelmed and I can't drink anymore." But this it's a sour beer, but not like puckeringly sour. That was just exactly what I was thinking. It's not yeah, it's not puckering tart. Um it does it's also not overly whiny. Mm -hmm. Which, um, that's always kind of the thing that gets me with a lot of sours. And probably more like kind of the, the barrel-aged uh, variants of things. Um, like, this still tastes like a beer, fundamentally. Um, it's just got those those brighter, kind of uh, funkier, like, top notes. Like, there's kind of a wetness in the... Or like a dank, but in more of a uh, a moist base basement <laughs> yep. kind, of, uh, yep. kind of way. Not in like a... Um, a, a weed hop way um in kind of in the finish as you like breathe out yeah <laughs> yeah like it's it's and it's not wet in the sense of like sweet it's wet in the sense of like this tastes a, a, a little moist <laughs> yeah no because there's it's, there's it's definitely nice. two yeah. types of dank that we have maybe minerality is what i'm looking for it's got a yeah. minerality to it yeah there's definitely two types of dank that we have in like pacific northwest brewing there's dank, like, yeah, like you're saying, like weed, like hops, like so herbal, so green, so much. And then there's dank, like, like mushrooms and moss I was gonna say and like, clay. Like ichor. Yeah. Yeah, and this is more of like an Icarus. Yeah. Um, that doesn't make it sound very appealing. It, it's very pleasant. Um, it's it's like a bright, clean. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 bright and clean. It's like a little funky, but it's not. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the whole thing isn't like drinking rainwater. It's just, mm -hmm. it's it's base like foundational note is kind of that that wild yeast sort mm -hmm. of basement dank, and then on top of that, there's like yeah the pomegranate fruit. Mm -hmm. There's sort of the fuzzy fizzy fun of like sour notes. Mm -hmm. It really comes together really well, honestly. There's also I just noticed there's like a a little tiny bit of like what I'm guessing is kind of hot bitterness, um, which is nice and kind of helps to round it out um i mean it would definitely be hot bitterness because you can tell from from this color like i wouldn't i wouldn't imagine there is very much like deeply roasted malt yeah. in this um and yeah the color is kind of like a very pleasant um orangey kind of pinkish red um i you know it, remind, it reminds me or it gives me the thought that maybe one of the games I would have you drive and I would co-pilot is the Rainpunk roguelike city builder game I've been playing. Oh yeah, the one with the the music is very nostalgic for me now. Uh, against the storm. Yeah, because I'll, I'll be like doing something else while you're playing it, and like every once in a while I like look over and I'm like, this sounds so familiar, and it's because you just keep playing this game. Yeah. While I'm in the room, the music <laughs> is really nice. Yeah. Because it's. It's rain punk because it's about people surviving a world, a, some sort of weird cataclysmic world uh, where it just, it only rains, it never stops raining. Uh, and so your, your seasons are drizzle, um, clearance, storm, and I think one more, but they're all just variations of rain mm -hmm. and how much rain you get at a time. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know. It's it's a it's an interesting game. Uh, there's a lot more I can go into about it, but because it's rain punk, 
and I'm drinking the sour beer, mm -hmm. all I can imagine is that the beer that you brew to make your people happy in these, you know, outposts that you build in this apocalyptic wasteland of rain mm -hmm. probably smell and taste a bit like this. Yeah, maybe. Though does the rain, like, flush out all the aerial yeasts? Or does mm. it just make them better? I mean, because we've got the, we've got the good yeasts up here, and it, it's pretty rainy on our coasts. Yeah. So we're talking about rain games. I, well, it'd probably be a terrible. It'd be terrible for doing podcast episodes about. But I, I want to make you play Rain World at yeah. some point. I personally have never played Rain World, and I probably never will, um, just because it's so difficult. Um, but it is fascinating. It's a really really interesting game. Um, yeah, we we, that, we shouldn't put that in the queue, but <laughs> I should bug you about it. And then if you ever get to the end of it, we should we should do an episode where we, uh, well, there are multiple endings, but if you get to like the ascension ending, uh, because that's we should we should take out edibles <laughs> and watch that sequence, cause uh, or do that sequence, cause that's like the closest I've ever had I've ever been to having a panic attack. Um, like while on on an edible um, while under the influence of, of, of cannabis I was, I was like I took an edible and I was in a really dark room and I was watching the ascension sequence for one of the one of the slug cats or whatever I was like holy shit like I'm not even playing right now I can't imagine how fucked up it is if you are playing um, anyway that game has some incredible art direction. I mean, it has some incredible direction in general, but... Mm. Yeah, I guess more from... I guess the old days would be... The, the equivalent of that for me was Braid. Oh, yeah, Braid. Yeah, Braid is like that, too. Because uh, um, I remember doing mushrooms with some friends, and then we went and did a hike out in the woods, and that was nice. And we're like, okay, I guess we've, we've done that. Let's go home. So we go home, we're hanging out. Uh... I'm reading Watchmen because they had a copy of it and my buddy Victor there is like playing a game on Xbox. I think it was like an Xbox arcade game and it was Braid. I'm like, whoa, this is wild. And he's like, yeah, you got to help me solve these puzzles. So we solve the puzzles and we play the game and spoiler, mm -hmm. as we're still like drifting through like ethereal like mind space on mushrooms, we get to the ending of the game where you save the princess and the game freezes. We're like, what the hell is going on? Why did the game freeze? Mm -hmm. And there's only one prompt on screen, and it's to rewind time mm -hmm. that we've been doing for hours now, rewinding time. Yeah. And as you rewind time, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> We're, the, We're bad the bad guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> and like on Mushrooms, you're just, just like, oh, this is... Like Q I Lancer's can, theme. I can feel this so much. It's too deep. It's too much. It's, it was insane. <laughs> yeah. No, Rain World is a lot less... Uh, it's a lot more... Here's just an incredibly... Uh, here's just an insane uh, kind of uh, uh, unprecedented audiovisual experience. Because um, you've been playing this 2D pixelated game for this whole time. Um, there's just... There's some image... like. There's some visual choices that are made during the sequences that, like, I've never seen anything like them in a video game before or since. Uh, like, you just... They, they did some crazy shit with their with their uh, graphical choices in this game. Um, oh, and also, like, the audio choices. And then when you take that in, in the context of, like, the sort of underlying, very mysterious story about maybe about uh well not maybe but about like reincarnation and like past civilizations and like shit like that like it's just it's it's fucking crazy i um, mean it's so long too it takes so long to get through it um well i'm gonna put that on the queue yeah no ring world is insane i <laughs> i should send you the video about like the i've mentioned it a million times at this point but the um the animation system um and the emergent behavior that arises from the animation like all of the ai is animation driven is like movement driven including the player characters which means you can do insane shit you can like do really bizarre jumps and stuff like it's so freeform that's why it's so hard mm. when you get started is because like 
it doesn't move like any other player character that you've ever tried to manipulate. Um, but once you get a feel for it, it's like you can do crazy shit that you can't do in like any other game. Anyway, um, I haven't even personally played this game. <laughs> I just think it's really fascinating. No, I think it would be good in the queue. Maybe it wouldn't be a good um, like actual play or yeah. like long play, but I'm sure we clip something together. Yeah. Because it, sound, it sounds like the kind of game like like my uh, absolute failure of a run against What's-His-Face in Deltarune. Jevil, yeah. Jevil. That could be kind of fun, yeah. It's it sounds like a, the kind of game where you would you would cut or speed up or splice through a lot of failures, mm-hmm. and then you get to the highlights of like oh here's how I finally got through that section or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you might yeah I feel like you might respond to it a little better too. Um, it's kind of a rogue light a little bit. I don't know. It's like you have save points, and then from each save point, it's a kind of a rogue like um, whatever. Yeah, it's a cool game. It's a. I think the best way I've found to describe it is. Um, you, do you know the 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 Ubisoft Pets games? Oh, okay. So they they have an animation system that I think I think Rain World's animation system might have been inspired by this. Actually, it was actually very cool for what it was at the time, where like all of the all of the pets are like combinations of circles. That also this game references pets a lot, um, but. Uh, yeah, so like the the animation system might, might have been inspired by that. It's like if Echo the Dolphin met. Do, do you know anything about Echo the Dolphin either? A little bit. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm more familiar with Fin Fin. Okay, Echo the Dolphin is completely different. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> like, I mean, just talking about like <laughs> digital pets, it's Fin Fin, Tamagotchi, and oh, Echo the Dolphin isn't a digital pet game. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I... Was that a Dreamcast game? Yeah, it was a Dreamcast game. Ah, uh, yeah, I. It's I... a didn't jump on that one bizarre uh kind of cyberpunk uh you play as a dolphin and you're trying to save the oh ocean. i remember hearing about that one it was in the same sort of time frame or genre that was kind of big at the time because i i played a demo i swear until like i burned a hole through that disc where you played a uh an uplifted cybernetic spider that escaped the lab and you have to like go on like a platforming adventure as a spider. And I feel like the dolphin game is kind of is it in the same genre of like you're an uplifted animal that escapes kind of it's a lab or whatever. Uh the oceans are being threatened um by aliens and <laughs> you're a dolphin <laughs> and you uh swim through the ocean and find out what's going on and then eventually you're a dolphin in a spaceship. Okay. Um, it's kind of the the main thing. So like the dolphin in a spaceship, plus like the bizarre procedural animation of uh, pets. It's like if Echo the Dolphin and the the Ubisoft pets uh, took mushrooms and then had a baby. That's like <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> and like pondered the nature of existence. That's what Rainworld is like. It was also like brutally hard. Um, there are so many video essays that I could send you about <laughs> Rainworld. Maybe I should just send you the video essays, but. Um, yeah, Rain World is crazy. Anyway. Add it to the list. It's like the most passionate I've ever been about a video game that I've never played. <laughs> well, maybe since, since Bioshock. Um, but also Tunic. We should play Tunic. Tunic would be a, a more accessible, more approachable podcast game, probably. But that'll definitely be one where I'm like trying to hold back. Um, I think that's everything I had to say. Yeah. Do you remember your sign off this time? I know it's been a minute. Fuck you and die. No, <laughs> what was it no, it hell? wasn't. It wasn't that. Was it? <laughs> wasn't that insane? Was it? Was it go to hell? Let's go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Go to go to hell. <laughs>